Thank you, everyone. Hope you are not asleep, as I heard that it's very cold here. Okay, let's begin. So my name is Uldis. I work for Microtik, and I will be showing you wireless presentation workshop today. So I have two main topics. One is a gift that you got, everyone got in your bag. The other is a wireless repeater package and its functions. So what exactly you got in the bag? Everyone should got a bag with t-shirt, stickers, and a router. But this time we have a new router like a board. So if someone hasn't like looked in the bag, so you can open it up and you'll see something like this. You can open it up. There's a special screw, secured screw. You can open it up and see how it looks like, just like on the pictures here. And it comes in two colors. You got all the black, not the white version, but you can also order from your distributors a white version if you prefer the black version. So what is a WAP board? What kind of specification, what can it do? So it has a fast CPU, like 650 megahertz CPU. It has enough uh, memory to do all the AP stuff and uh, some other stuff. And it has dual chain wireless, 2.4 gigahertz. So it is good enough for like hotels or uh, some outdoor access points. And it has two DBI antennas on top and 100 megabit ethernet port. And we wanted to make it uh, very affordable. We also made it a voltage support from 11 to 57 volts. And we also low power consumption, only up to four watts. And of course, it's, since it's an outdoor device, the operating temperatures can be from minus 40 to plus 70 it's Celsius, not Fahrenheit. And also dimensions not so big, so you can see in my hand. So the main features are it's, it's two-chain wireless device. It has both jack and PoE Ethernet. So you can power from jack, from battery, or PoE. And it has those wide input voltages. And of course, it supports AF and AT, active and passive PoE standards. And it's also suitable for indoor and outdoor use. And it has a waterproof case. So you can put it outside, there is no water going inside. So where we could use that? So there are multiple usage cases. One option could be in the ceiling. It has all the, well, all the necessary like uh, things and screws for you to mount it on the ceiling. It has special breakout here for the cable, you break it out and put the cable through, just like on the picture. So nobody will see even there's a cable. So you can mount it on the hotels, like this hotel, for example, or some other buildings. Or other usage case, just like the name, WAP, it's wall access point, you can mount it on the wall. It comes with the screws and a special, like, a special template where you can uh, drill the holes, precise holes, and mount it very easy. Also, soon uh, you will also get uh, an email from your distributors. Most likely is that new WAP AC is ready. So what is WAP AC? It has even faster CPU. It has dual, two wireless interfaces, so one for 2.4 gigahertz dual chain, and for five gigahertz AC chip, we made it in the small, same size box, three antennas, so three, triple chain. And of course, it's gigabit. -y. But of course, due to there's two wireless interfaces, the power consumption is a little bit higher, but still, we then, good. Okay, next 
topic is a wireless repeater package or wireless rep package. Here you can see all the features that we'll talk about. Here's an overview, like a repeater set, a background scan, virtual APs, VPS client, GN. So let's go more detailed for each one of those features. So first, and uh, the feature is a repeater setup, just like for the name, wireless rep, wireless repeater. So what does it do? It allows you to get signal from the AP and broadcast it further away using the same physical interface, just like for this interface. So basically what it does, it extends your wireless coverage. You can say it like a wireless repeater. So when you run this uh, command, it actually is a complex of uh, commands. It do does four things. So first, what it does, it configures wireless interface to connect to your uplink AP, to your master AP. And then it creates virtual AP interface for your ex extending wireless coverage. Then it creates a bridge interface. And the last part, it adds both wireless interfaces into the same bridge. And you have transparent, se seamless, like uh, extended access point. So next feature is background scan. We have a lot of requests for this feature, so we finally made it. But it's all only working for 8.211 protocol. So it will not work on Nstream or NV2. There's also working conditions, in which case it will work or not. So to make it work, the wireless interface should be enabled. So you cannot run it when the interface is disabled. And for the AP mode, it will do the background scan only on the same wireless uh, frequency, so the same channel. You cannot do the background scan on another frequency. And for the station mode, it can do the background scan, but the station should be connected to the access point, and only then you can run the background scan. And of course, you can run the background scan on the virtual interfaces, as well as AP and station. So what is virtual uh, interfaces? So you all were common like that we have virtual AP, and now you know, with the new package, you can also make virtual stations. And but the limitation is only supported for ADA 211 protocol. And you can add the virtual uh, AP and client on the same physical interface, just like for this one. And you can create multiple such interfaces. And just in the like in previous slide, the wireless background scan is also supported on these virtual interfaces. We have also VPS client support. So if you have like a regular uh, access point that has VPS functionality, uh, you don't remember the VPA key, and that access point has a VPS button, you can push that button on the access point, and on in the client you can just click on this VPS client, and it will configure, uh, get the information from VPS server and configure all the security profile SSID and it's ready to connect to your access point. So next feature is also a feature that was asked for like, I don't know, maybe five or six years, is a uh, scan to file. So why would uh, this be needed? Uh, it would be needed for purposes that you would like to do a remote scan of your clients. You have an access point, you have multiple clients, but you want to, you want to do a scan on the remote side. But before, you, when you do that, you are, get, you are disconnected from the access point and you don't get any result. So with a new wireless package, you can do that. So how can we do that? We can use a scan to file feature. So what you could do, you could use scan to file uh, together with a round setting. So what it does, it, uh, you, you connect to the client, specifies this command, scan to file, specifies file name, and select round, for example, one round. What it does, it starts scanning, does full scan from scan list, from maybe first channel to 11 channel, 2.4 gigahertz, then stops, saves the result, and voila, it connects back to access point. And you can connect back to the client and get that file. If you would like uh, to uh, not interrupt the, uh, interrupt the wireless 
link, you can also do the background scan. Save to files also supported on the background scan. So next feature is to make it more, even more simpler. We simplified our scan list feature by adding a step. So now, for example, you have a, like instead of like 10 or 15 uh, frequencies that you need to place in like scan list, you can just do that only with one command, one setting like, for example, here for 5500 to 5700, you can do that with one such line. You just specify what is the step like 20 megahertz, it could be 5 megahertz, it could be 10 megahertz, depending on your needs. And also we have added station roaming support. It's for the wireless client, for the, not for the AP side, but for the station mode. So it's supported only in ADA 211 protocol. So what it actually does, so when the client is connected to access point, for example, to wall, wall IP. Well, for example, this is one AP and here's another. It connects, interconnects together. It checks uh, periodically uh, doing background scans and looks for a, a new access point. For example, if this client is moving and it's moving away, it sees there is a new access point with better signal, it could draw onto that new one. In previously or in older packages, uh, we had like strictly made it so that the client will all, all, always try to hold to the same access point and will not even try to consider to moving to the next AP until it can't ping any, can't send any packets to that one. Now with this feature, it does background scan and it could roam more friendlier without losing a lot of packets and performance. And also it, we have a dynamic uh, time interval for those background scans. If the signal is getting worse, the background scan intervals are shorter. And the, if the signal is very good, there is no need to do those uh, background scans. We, we do it less often. Also, we have added a GN setting. So since ADA211 protocol is very old and we would like to get rid of the B devices, legacy devices, so we created the GN setting, which disallows the uh, data rates for one to 11 megabits. So here you can see the supported data rates from six to 54 megabit data rate. And it's also very useful if you would like to get better performance by disallowing uh, the lower data rates. And this setting also is supported into the Capsman as well. As well, we have added a few new settings to the Capsman. A lot of our users in the forum were complaining that they want to be customize all kinds of settings and do full, like they want to be in control. We didn't allow that for a long time. Now finally, we have listened to you. So we, here, here, here it goes. So we have now the distance, retry settings, pr protection mode, frame lifetime, and disconnect timeout. I think that's enough for you for now. So and distance setting is now indoors by default because Capstone is more used for like indoor devices. And as well, there's a lot of like uh, guys that are experts in like uh, managing what data rates they want to operate in Capstone setup and. They are complaining uh, they don't, do not want to use Capsman because they cannot be the uh, king of the data rate selection. So that's why we created this uh, feature. You can now make custom data rates for the Capsman. So you can specify basic supported rates. So, and also the a a AC data rates. So everything could be now done in the repeater package. Okay, when you will try go at home, you will get your access point, put on your uh, working desk, open it up, try to install the new wireless repeater package, and maybe try to connect it. And maybe, if you, maybe a good solution is to put maybe in your garage or in your yard, like extend your wireless coverage so you can get some barbecue and do some uh, searching on the internet. So now I will show you how to do that, so.
First, I will power up the board. I have an other access point down here, and this will connect to that access point and will repeat the signal. Okay, now we have, I'm connected to two routers. This HAP AC is my main router, my home router, for example, and this VAP board is my repe repeater that will repeat my signal to my yard where I will do some barbecue. So what we need to do, we go to the wireless section on the VAP, and there's a button, setup repeater. You can the same do with also the console. So we're specifying the interface on which you will do. Also, uh, if, you would, if you don't have an access point that has a VPS button, you can also specify the passphrase here, if you know, or the SSID, if you are located in an area there's like 20 or 30 access points and you want to connect to the specific SSID. Okay, let's start. It shows scanning for VPS access point. So when we go for our access point, and push VPS accept button. And negotiating and done, voila. It's, everything is done. So what it done? It made wireless interface into station bridge. So this is the main interface. It connected, this VAP connected to my access point with the main interface and then it created virtual access point, the same SSID, which will lab, wireless lab, and it created a bridge port and added into the bridge. So now you can do roaming, you can go into the, from your home, go to the barbecue, and do some barbecue, and then go back to home and eat it. So you will all be roaming. But if you would like to use different SSID, it's possible. For example, here we can specify wireless Lab one, so it's up to you. You have full control what to do. You can use different SSID. So now you have wireless lab and wireless lab one. You have two different APs now. You can even like uh, disable the bridging and make it uh, this repeater router as a firewall router. For example, we have like a training. One guy that was telling that uh, he's, he, he would like to use this function in the airport, like airplane, like uh, the getting connected to like uh, access point and uh, using only like uh, like uh, one connection and for his like phone and uh, like iPad. So it doesn't need to like make two. I don't know if it's legal or not, but it's up to you. So you can do all the firewall, everything, just like treat those interfaces like a full functional interface. You can do firewall, routing, whatever you like, just like in RouterOS. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Yes, we have a microphone somewhere. Yes. Mm, basically, yes. Since it's a physical interface, the same uh, rules applies. How many times does that count? So you have one master access point in the line, so you're putting multiple computers down the line. How many computers do you have to use the repeat that signal? repeat the signal? You can repeat it how far as well, how, how, how far you want, but the speed could be like half in each time, like when you do that. Uh, 
the virtual interface will start to work only when the master is connected. So if it will, in the middle, some access point will not be able to connect to the uplink, it will not work. Right, so the question again, so all your remote repeaters all have to associate to the primary master repeater. You can't have a repeater connect to a repeater. Uh, you mean like daisy chain, like, yes. Correct. You can, but uh, each of them should be labeled for, for example, first should be able to connect to this, to yes. the master. Then master this, to one, one to two, yes, two to three. Each time when the one connection is established, uh, each virtual interface will start working. That pops up, mm -hmm. next one connects, that virtual interface stops, starts to work, and the next one, like, chain one by one, it will, they will start working. Right, until it goes down to, like, a crawl. Thanks. Thank you, and next question, here. Thank you. Um, we've been looking out for a device that could uh, come in under like what I have you displayed there. That will connect back, for example, if you have an X-State where you have uh, buildings in cluster very close together, and uh, uh, as a WIPs, you want to give a single device to a, a user without having to do a, a station or a client outdoor with an internal uh, router, but you are not necessarily using the repeater function of the device. You want to use such that, just like the last uh, analogy you gave, that you could give a separate SSID to the device, haven't connected to the primary uh, 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 router. So now, I'm asking that, can this device undo a situation where uh, I'm able to use it to connect back to the primary router, and then I'm able to also now set it up to have a separate SSID and then allocating a separate IP address internally for uh, 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 internal users. Uh, so as I told you, for uh, in like this repeater, uh, first you need to make sure that the main interface is connected to, like here, it's connected to my wireless lab, you connect to the main AP, then you can create a virtual interface, you can created a different uh, SSID or like any SSID, so those will treat it as like a individual a separate interface. So you can, since it's not in the bridge, you can create uh, like an IP address on that, like 10.1.1.24. And you can use DHCP server onto that. What's, what's I think it's in bridge. Oh, wrong interface here. So now we have created this like rep, rep access point. And we can maybe even like remove uh, the security profile, no security, make it an open, and I can create like a firewall rule. To the main, uh, main interface. Oh, on the bridge. So basically, everyone that connects to this uh, rep access point will be able to get like my private IP address, and all the traffic will be routed to my uplink. There's no internet. No internet. Oh, I, do. I need to have DHCP client on the bridge interface first. And now it now should be working. No route to host. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, next question, please. <laughs> this partially answers my question. So basically, this could be used as a travel router. I can provide, I can connect to an AP, let's say in the hotel, provide my own private um, SSID that could do filtering, VPN, yes. tunnel. Yes. And this Correctly. works with this model we received as part of the attendance, correct? Yes, it works with this. It can also work on, for example, map light. You can put it on airplane, put it, power it from USB from your like in-flight device and like do whatever you like. 
Yeah, we, we do this when we travel around. So you can put it in the hotel, get the internet from this, and make your own access point using the same router. You don't need now you don't need two physical routers now to do that. Okay, next question. Does the master AP have to be a MicroTik device for this to work? No. Uh, if the master AP is not mi MicroTik, it will use uh, not station, uh, where it is, not station bridge, but station pseudo bridge in this case. Of course, there's limitation for like uh, all this MAC tr tr translation. Some, some like tunnels would, would not go through, but if you use like just, you can also use some regular station mode and do all the firewalling stuff if you don't want to like do this bridging transparent. Yes, next question. So if you have multiple virtual APs set up and you use the WPS button on a client, which AP does it get settings for? Uh, it will look for the first that will get like a first VPS message that you get. But you can use uh, also, if you know, there's a multiple uh, access points running VPS for that repeater function or like VPS client, you can specify for which SSID you want to do that. If you have multiple access points and everyone's running VPS pushed, pushed button, you can specify the specific SSID or MAC address of the access point. It will negotiate with only that specific and show that. That's if you're using the MicroTik as a client, right? Uh, is this, yes, it's a VPS so client for the if, client. If you're using the MicroTik as the access point and you have a laptop, let's say, and you use the WPS. For access point, there is a button, like also like VPS access, push a button. And, and you can always check the logs. You can always check the logs, which one connects to you. Okay, any more? Uh, yeah, sorry. Can you then use the Ethernet port to plug into a print remote printer as well? Uh, you can do whatever like it's all in your. <laughs> you can bridge route. I don't know, make some uh, failover to Ethernet. It's full routerless functionality. So what about whenever the AC one comes out and you're gonna have dual band and you have five gigahertz and two four? You mean you VAP AC? Yes. Yes. It should be, we are now f uh, doing the paperwork for SEC and like it should be like in a few, few weeks to do So you have to do the repeater to. with five gigahertz and then redeploy with 2.4 on it? Yes, you can do that as well. We are doing here at the hotel, like using five gigahertz for uplink and 2.4 for like regular access point. But you okay. can do it also like on five gigahertz uh, uplink and the same like uh, repeating of the same AC. Okay. Okay, we have more questions. Uh, there, the hand was first. Hi. Um, yes. Let's say you have a Cisco router and you're using this as access point, and you don't, you don't, you don't have enabled WPS on the Cisco router, and you're not gonna use it. Can you still set it up? Yes, as I told you, you can use uh, setup repeater, and there is no need to like. Uh, let's see, like wireless lab. Reset configuration, and we can do, and, and I'm specifying my key, as I know the key, for example, and do this, and it created and connected without any like VPS, just specifying that uh, security key and SSID, it configured my a main interface to the station bridge, or in your Cisco case, it would be station or, or station pseudo bridge, and created my access point. Thank you. Next question. All of this is replacing the mesh section, I'm asking. Uh, this is all more like for repeating, like mesh is a little bit different. We have multiple access points, but Depending on your like setup, you can use instead of mesh also this if it's like small network. But still, uh, WDS and all this mesh still works. Okay, thank you. Next question. 
Uh, regarding the two wireless package options, are Endstream and NV2 the same in wireless FP versus wireless RAP, or is there a, I know uh, the CM2 is deprecated now. Uh, CM2 and the repeated package is almost the same, but with all those new features. Wireless FP uh, will be soon removed and replaced with CM2 or repeater package. Uh, in CM2, there's a lot of improvements to NV2 and uh, also for Einstein protocol. So if you are still using FP, I would recommend to upgrade to CM2 or repeater. That's the, going to be the preferred yes. Endstream MV2 train going forward. Yes, because okay. soon we will remove the FP package. So it will be only CM2 or repeater package. Okay. Thank you. One more question. Uh, when you install the repeater package, does it uh, deprecate the CM2 package, or is it side by side? Uh, it is re disabling. For example, here I have bundle package CM2. It's disabled, and I have additional repeater package. And you have all still have the remaining features that you had in CM2 and repeat. Uh, yes, uh, repeater package is basically the same CM2 plus those new additional features. It doesn't lose any uh, old feature. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank I you. Think yeah, I think that's it. Um, thank now you very much. Lunchtime.